guys? It's William from Negro Randomy with another video. We gotta talk about fresh and fit, or some people call <laughs> fake and phony broadcast. We gotta talk about two, these two brothers, and they bring up an issue in the black community. And this issue is that black men hate criticism, especially when it comes from another black man. Now, Fresh and Fit, they rose from the manosphere. And the manosphere is more like a, a group, a, a group of men that have come together and decided that they're gonna have their, I guess their barbershop talk on the up and online forum. Uh, such as YouTube. So a lot of brothers come on there and, you know, they've had a meteoric rise for the whole year. A lot of brothers from the Menosphere, Donovan Sharp, Kevin Samuels, Solo TV 84, Mark Webb Virgin, even O'Shea Duke Jackson, the leader of the Black Menosphere, had a lot of high hope for Fresh and Fit, because Fresh and Fit is doing something that a lot of these content creators would not do. A lot of these content creators in the Menosphere, they do their monologues and they hide behind their avatars. And they go ahead and they talk about dating and women and lifestyle. But they're never challenged by the same women that they criticize. That's why Fresh and Fit is different and had a meteoric rise is that they would actually have the women that they're cr critiquing live on their show to talk about dating, to, you know, debunk these delusional women live on their show. No other podcast would do something like this. And that's why a lot of times it was even entertaining seeing a lot of the women being thrown out and a lot of them exposed for their delusions. And that's why they've had a meteoric rise from under 100,000K in December 2020. And then until now, December 2021, they are now a half a million. Even with the little hiccup. But lately, these brothers have been exposed for the same issue that they complain about. They are stimping hard. They're out here paying women's phone bills, even though they talk about, you know, not simping out and paying women's phone bills. They're doing the exact opposite of what they preach. And that's why a lot of the brothers in the ministry are pointing this out to them. They've called them privately to tell them to stop what they were doing. They've even gone publicly to criticize a lot of the content creator fresh and fit. And even though with all of this criticism, they continue to double down, triple down, quadruple down on their simping behaviors. And th there's a large followers that are still defending these brothers, even though they've been exposed on these YouTube streets. Even when they show all these documents showing that these brothers are not doing the opposite. And then they're charging a lot of these brothers thousands of dollars for advice that they would never follow themselves. What has happened is they had good intention, but now the money has, has really stopped them, stopped them in their tracks, has really clouded their judgment, has made them into what they've hated. They are playing, they are paying for pussy. They're forcing women to have sex with them. You know, they're, they're out here kicking, you know, getting rid of workers that were with them and not paying them. You know, the, you know, the people that came up with a lot of their strategy on how to market their podcast, they're not trying to pay them. And they've gone to start their own YouTube channels and expose and continue exposing them. Even other Menosphere groups have, you know, out them. Studios 21, Anthony Johnson. 
they're out here creating baby mamas, the same baby mamas that they be criticizing is the same baby mamas they're out here cre creating. And last, they're always out here promoting fake gurus. And a lot of these fake gurus are also supporting them and pushing them forward. But, but thanks to the Menosphere, the Black Menosphere, where we can have a collective of Black men out here correcting and exposing and protecting other Black men from other fake gurus. The Menosphere of 2021 has changed. Now we have a lot of professionals. We have lawyers, we have doctors, we have accountants out here exposing. And it's great to see that the Menosphere is out here exposing all these fake gurus. Because that's what we need in the Black community to really expose a lot of these fake gurus. A lot of these fake gurus are really taking advantage of the Black, black community. But now you see, they're trying to silence the critics with these copyright strikes. They're out here doing these bogus, <laughs> bogus allegations. And you know, it's surprising that the same woman that they complain about is the same woman that they're calling upon to come and save their ass. <laughs> but these women, these paralegals that they hire, not even lawyers, are out here they know what they're up to and they're take and you know what they're working against fresh and fit they want these brothers to get terminated the way that they're poorly defending fresh and fit and you know in my opinion these brothers these two brothers they need to go now all the other stuff was funny entertaining you know with Aber and preach but going around trying to destroy people's livelihood trying to destroy destroy people's hours that they spent on creating a brand and this a lot of them are doing this full time and this is a bread and they want to out be out here trying to destroy these people live over bogus allegations and you know this is interesting that these black men fresh and fit don't want to debate or address these other black men who are criticizing them as alpha males. Because that's what alpha males will do. When another alpha male comes upon another alpha male, they will have a fight to find out who is the greater alpha male. But these alpha males are acting like beta males running to their white daddy for assistance. They're running to white YouTube <laughs> for assistance. They're not truly alpha males. These brothers are beta male sympathy. Sympathy is out here paying women electrical bills, phone bills, cash apping them, even though they tell you not to do, but they're doing it for a piece of pussy. So, you know, a lot of this is, has to do with the black community. A lot of these issues was fresh and fit. Fresh and fit is tired of having black men criticize them. It's okay for, you know, YouTube or them or the greater manosphere to criticize them. They didn't go, they didn't issue these copyright strikes with largely white content creators. Maybe Spencer Cornelius. But largely, these copyright strikes, they only put it largely on black men. But they didn't put it on white men, on the greater manosphere. What they're really trying to say is when they send these copyright is, nigga, who you think you is? That's what they're really trying to say to these black men, that you are in no authority to criticize us. So they run to a white daddy YouTube, thinking that they're going to defend them, but uh-oh. <laughs> they are not trying to defend. They know what's going on, and they see what pressure fit is going on, and they repeat to them, and tell them that they have seven days to straighten up or be kicked off the platform. They need to be kicked off. You see, Fresh and Fit and Black men in general need to get used to seeing other Black men in positions, authoritative positions, like being a lawyer, doctor, accountant. Place a position where you need to listen to the person in authority. 
largely in the early 1900s, you know, black men were in the underclass, you know, ruled by largely white employers, white bosses, taught by white teachers, you know, for, uh, police crime enforcement was by largely white cops. So we've always seen white people in authoritative positions. So when they see black men in authoritative position, this is something new, something out of the ordinary. A lot of them are saying, we don't need to listen to them. And that's what's going on with Fresh and Fit. They see these brothers in these high positions telling them what they're doing is wrong. And they're, and they're telling them, nigga, who you think you is? A lot of black men have problem listening to black people. You know, if, if the white man doesn't say it, they don't believe it. They're waiting for the white man to say it on, before they believe it. But that's what's so great about the manosphere that we're able to self-regulate each other. That we need to guess, we need to start getting used to seeing black men in position. Cause you see in the streets, when you see in the streets, a lot of time in the streets, you know, especially in the, in the drug game, a lot of these black men are solving their issues with the gun. Instead of, you know, approaching the brother and having a disagreement and debating over it and having a, a back and forth, talking, supporting evidence. As soon as they have a disagreement, what? They pull out their gun and start shooting at each other. They don't even want to deal it with as civilized men. But then when they have an issue with the cop or they have an issue with the judge or they have an issue with their employer or they have an issue with their teachers, they do not act this way towards them, to these people in authority. But they'll act like that to other black men. Somehow that, you know, they don't have the same authority, even though they have gone to school, done education and got their licenses. So you can see where this stem of, you know, betrayal or not following or not listening to other brothers from the manosphere. And then they're going to keep continuing and have all these disillusional followers with them. But yes, this is the problem in the black community is that we do not value ourselves even when we raise through the ranks. Brothers are still out here in the crabs in the barrel mentality. You gotta criticize a brother who's a lawyer or a doctor, his qualifications. They wanna see, oh, can I see your paperwork to see if you're actually a doctor or a lawyer, even though they've proven themselves. So I see this is the real problem that's going on with Fresh and Fit. They are not, they are not okay with other brothers criticizing them and they use and abuse the copyright system to try and silence these brothers. And I hope that this backfires on them and that YouTube finally closes this chapter. They are out here violating all the YouTube you know, misusing the copyright strike. They got people pulling guns on them. They got people fighting. They got, you know, YouTube has put up a lot with Fresh and Fit. Maybe because it's largely, you know, because within the last year, they've tried to be more sympathetic towards the black community. So maybe that's why YouTube is having patience with Fresh and Fit. They're giving them seven days to retract and they've given them four warnings, not even three strikes. They, they're giving them a four strike to shape up and they still are ignoring them, right? Uh, you too. Anyway, guys, what do you think? I think that black men hate criticism still, especially from other black men. We still haven't largely as a black group respect other black men in authority. And you can see it on the streets where we shoot each other over little disagreements. You step on my Jordan. Instead of just hashing it out as civilized men, you want to go to the extreme and just silence the brother by any means necessary.
You don't want to allow any brother to have any criticism towards you. So you hit him with these bogus allegations. Anyways, guys, this is one for two. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you like the essay.